When looking for something that's just right, you usually turn to the professional opinion of Goldilocks, and in regards to a film that's not too hot or too cold, then Puss in Boots exactly serves that purpose. This film's elements really shine on another level than what we've known before, where we are going to take a look at one of the antagonists of this very movie being Goldilocks and the Three Bears, where in fact, in this very film, they aren't really antagonists. The only reason that is applied to them is because they're opposing Puss in this instance who seeks the same goal, and only one person can have that goal, and of course of the fact that they are portrayed as a crime family. Everyone who is after the wish has separate wanted posters showing that everyone involved is a criminal. But then again, we do not really see them get to commit big crimes other than the fact that they break into somebody's home to find someone they need. Most of their involvement in this story is about them being together as a family. They give us the old backstory about what we know as Goldilocks, finding something that's just right and explaining how they accepted her into the family, how she became a sibling and a daughter as a child. Child. And the adventure that we go through here is, is her secretly trying to find her real family, the ones who probably gave her up at birth or died because of the fact she is described as an orphan. And what really makes Goldilocks and the gang great is the fact that they are British. Oi, baby, sniff him out. You don't tell me what to do. Listen to your sister, baby. Oh, she's not my sister! This gives him more sass and more character that you would just actually love. And as you go throughout the story, you see how much they love each other and how much they do act like regular families do. One of the great appealing factors that this movie has to teach us this message of found families and how adoptive families are in fact your own family. We get certain moments where it subtly shows how Goldilocks' thoughts are to find her real family, where she shows faint happiness around her family thinking about what she had lost, while the others are on the surface just see a happy daughter. You see them talk about what they would do with the last wish, like setting them up successfully for life or having some cool random things, and we see Goldilocks at first appear to be celebrating along those ideas. But when talking to her mother, you see her use the birthday wish rules to hide the very truth. The way that they treat her is like having a firstborn child. They tell off their son to listen to her sister, who is the supposed leader of this very group. Which is in fact funny because of how relatable it is for us boys with older sisters, and I should know myself. And I like how at first they portray the bears as being big threatening bears who just follow Goldie's command, but the moment they enter Mama Luna's household is when we get to see their real personality shine. In this instance, the father is being the most respectable and and the most talented at a piano. Excuse me, my darling. We're looking for the legendary Puss in Boots. Have you perhaps... And as true as family is, they are the most cohesive team. Puss and Kitty argue a lot with Perito around, and Jack Horner is just allowing his men to be killed or indirectly killing them. But here, they in fact show true teamwork and loyalty and stick by each other's side when you see the others seemingly are backstabbed or divisive in some instances, and this loyalty is displayed till the very end. And going back to that moment I discussed earlier about it, we get to see Goldie stressing about the map but actually looking back her past. You see her, the book she checked out when she was young, the one that she was reading, and it was one that she scribbled in a drawing where there was a happy couple with their daughter, where her mother actually explains the day that their lives were changed. Quite possibly for the better in this instance, everything became just right for them. A scene where we could see her new family accept her. The day when our world became just right. It's a brilliant choice that this film makes to have them showcase a side of life that's very important to many people over life's big backdrop. But here we also see Goldie searching for her life when we know that the one she has is literally right in front of her. Yes, they do have their disagreements, mostly between brother and sister, but the core thing still remains being that they'll always be there for each other until the big reveal comes. And of course, this is the part where she reveals what her wish is. After being upset and arguing after losing the map once again, she finally reveals that all she wants is is her real parents back in her life. I'm getting a family! That's what? A proper family! Then everything will be just right! The scene where you could see that the bears become visibly upset and saddened at this revelation, that Goldie actually wants them sort of replaced out of her life. And the true sad thing about this is the fact that they still went out to support her because her being happy is what truly matters to them. They raised her to this point and they cared a lot for her. No matter what, her happiness is the number one thing they want the most, to help her, their daughter. Everything about this moment captures the main part of what family isn't about. It isn't about being blood-related family. That actually 
actually extends to the people who actually adopt you and care for you. They're as much as a family as the ones you are related to because they are the ones who took you in as their own and everyone in their related family is in fact yours and they all love you for it, no matter who you are related to. A message that works when placing humans with bears, representing kids across the world getting adopted by people who are not their own blood. And you see, at the end of it, Goldie forgets the map and rescues her baby brother in the process, where even though they express regret for losing the map, she says it doesn't matter because what is right in front of her. I did get my wish. Everything is just right. Oh. Indeed, the facts are known that everything is just right. She finally learns the lesson and accepts that the family she wants is right in front of her this whole entire time, and definitely won the orphan lottery in that case, having a family she can trust and one that can take over a pie business after the previous owners blew up. This is a great part of the movie that resolves all conflict between the main characters, the two main protagonists of the story who learn to accept what they have in their life. The main message that people will want to take away from, especially for kids, where Puss learned the value of life and Goldilocks learned the value of her life. And I think that's a great thing to learn and present to a family audience about what really matters and what brings us together throughout life. This film represents the best of life and the courage to pursue it and find what really matters and Goldilocks and the Bears represents what that is all about. And with that said, I'm all done here, so goodbye.